is the Fubini theorem weird? No, it's not weird. Come on. This is, this is something that we've used all along. We just never really called it anything special or noticed what we were doing. Let's go back to single variable calculus. Let's compute the area between the graphs of two curves in the plane. Let's say y equals f of x and y equals g of x as x goes from a to b. Do you remember that formula? We would set up the area element and we would then sweep that as you go from x equals a to x equals b. But now we can think about the area element dA as being an infinitesimal rectangle given by the intersection of vertical and horizontal strips. So instead of uh, doing things the way that we did it back in single variable calculus, let's think of the area A as the integral of the area element dA, where now dA is not a vertical strip, but rather the rectangle with dimensions dx and dy. Now by Fubini, it doesn't matter what order we integrate this in. We can take the integral of one dx dy, or we can take the integral of one times dy dx x. This is not going to matter. What is going to matter is the limits of integration. If we integrate with respect to y first, fixing x as a constant, then what are the limits on y? y goes from g of x to f of x. And then having integrated out the y direction, what are the limits on x? x goes from a to b. Now let's do that integral. What is the antiderivative of dy? It's simply y. And then when we evaluate that from g of x to f of x, what do we get? Oh, that's right. We get quantity f of x minus g of x. Now we integrate that with respect to x, evaluate as x goes from a to b, and boom, that's it. That is the formula that we all know and love from single variable calculus. We were really, really doing a double integral and using Fubini. We just didn't have that language available to us, but now we do. Okay, so let's see, a few remarks about using the Fubini theorem. First of all, you got to pay attention to limits. That's the thing that you have to be most careful about because in general, the limits are not going to be constants. They're going to be functions of the other variables in the integrand that you have not yet integrated out. Second point, I keep saying that the order doesn't matter. And that's true in theory, but in practice, well, things get a little more complicated. It's going to take some time and some practice for us to get good at multiple integrals. That's what we're going to wind up doing next. We're going to get a lot of practice. Now, is it going to be hard? Kind of. I mean, yes and no. It's going to be a different type of hard. The hard part for us is not going to be in doing the anti-differentiation. Most of the time, that's going to be straightforward. What's going to be challenging is setting up the integrals, getting the limits right, getting the order of integration so that we can get the job done.